So you guys, it's just an immense pleasure uh, to kick off this second session. So today I'll be talking about electricity for you and me. So when I was younger, I used to dream of this fairy tale. I used to make fairy tales and dream of a utopia. But then as I grew older, those utopias I created gradually fell apart. And I, like many others, learned to say that utopias belong in fairy tales and the real world belongs in the real world. Well, I'm here to tell you that that's junk because utopias might not exist, but after that comes yet. So in fact, let's talk about technology and how technology can create this utopia that we want. So we've had the iPhone 1, 2, 3, no, not 1, sorry. We've had the iPhone 3, 4, 5, 6, boom, technology. And also, we're counting well enough to make Barney proud. But let's talk about an industry that we all love and hold dearly, the electric generation industry. Let's talk about how we first uh, thought about energy generation. Well, back when we were cave people, we saw that when we burn a fire rock, now boringly named coal, we made fire. And with that fire, we burned our food and we were able to cook meat. And then later, we became a bit smarter and we were able to use the rivers to grind our grain. And as you can see, food is a recurring theme in human history. And then come the Industrial Revolution, where we were a bit smarter. What we did was we combined the two. We combined fire and water to the point that we burned something to turn water into steam, which turns a turbine, which turns a dynamo, which makes electricity, which then comes to your house and allows you to power your microwave and warm that hot pocket you always wanted to. But if I hope you learned something from this is that it still fundamentally remains the same. Humans love burning stuff. In fact, we're such avid pyromaniacs then the last night, we burned an additional 90 million tons of global warming pollution into the atmosphere, 20% of which will remain for the next 10,000 years. So, we aren't as innovative as we'd like to think. This thinking does not cut it. We can't keep on using the Industrial Revolution thinking to power our future, because as our problems grow more complex, we see that we need to come up with even more ambitious solutions we see, like John F. Kennedy said, that too often we live in the comfort of our opinion without enduring the discomforts of thought. And today this talk is about making sure we put ourselves in that region of discomfort, and to think and to create a system that works for all of us. So that's why right here we're going to create a generation system all together. That means me and you guys. So I've interviewed, okay, I haven't really interviewed any of you all, but. If I were to, if I did interview you guys, what I'd probably see is that with electricity, maybe you don't want to pay electric bills anymore, or you want to decrease your electricity bills. Perhaps you want to have the AC on, or the water heater on 24-7 without Mother Nature slapping you in the face, or perhaps your parents slapping you in your face because electricity bills are too damn high. But that's not the point. The thing is, we can create something. We can make the idea for dreamers. And also, just going back with the electricity bills, uh, my father complains for the both of us, so I'm well acquainted with it all. Anyway, so we are going to create a system, and that system involves this, solar panels. Because human ambition and human creativity is only contained by the shackles of energy. And once we free ourselves from the shackles of energy and creating energy in such abundance, we can accomplish anything. Like fully electrically powered aircraft, like Richard Branson would like to do, or perhaps even go to space with electric rockets, or even more, or even more, we can have wireless electricity, like Nikola Tesla tried to do, like Nikola Tesla accomplished in the 1900s. So with the idea, we don't need these large multi-billion dollar solar panel farms. In fact, the idea is much simpler than that. We use something everybody has something of, and that is property. We use solar panels, and few people will buy solar panels, put on their house, and what happens is that they can, they're allowed to sell their surplus electricity to any other building. So we divorce ourselves away from utility companies. So as you'll see in the diagram, we're connecting communities together. The houses in yellow are the ones that have solar panels, and they can sell it to the houses in white, and the houses in white can buy from them. And from this, you see, we connect communities, we connect regions. And then the grand scheme, the grand strategy of it all is to connect the continents. 
And that's where we have the wireless electricity and selling things offshore and these grand ideas. So remember how I mentioned it was an idea for dreamers? Well, that's just something my marketing agents told me to call it. Rather, it has a cooler name that fits its personality, and that is DEP. Not Johnny DEP, DEP. Dynamic Electric Platform. So that's what we're trying to create. We're trying to create a pursuit of wealth for me, and so a pursuit of wealth for us, and to create a culture of a type of shared electricity that's constantly flowing throughout the globe. So where I'm from, uh, in Sierra Leone, which is a nation, a beautiful nation uh, on the West African continent, what happens is that a lot of my relatives are shopkeepers. And you'll realize that in this 21st century, it's nearly impossible to do anything without electricity. So a lot of them have to suffer, suffer that. But however, my, my relatives are fortunately able to afford generators. And using those generators, they can, they can have light. But the point here is, the money you spend on that generator and maintaining that generator, that's less money for you to, to uh, sell, less money for you to buy inventory, and ultimately down the road, less money for the country to grow. And that's why we're all here after all. We want to grow as people and we want to grow countries and grow the world. But remember, those are people who can afford a generator. Imagine those who can't. Imagine a farmer in Sierra Leone, in, in rural Sierra Leone, his wealth, is slavishly tied to his health and his well-being. What he does today will dictate whether his family has food next week. And the reason we can't have this, these large farms in Sierra Leone, is because we lack the mother of all infrastructure, electricity. So how can we have this idea work in a place like Sierra Leone or in other developing nations? That is, we just have some entrepreneurs who save up money and then what they do is on their little properties, they build these solar panels, and then they begin selling that surplus to the people around them. So you begin selling to your neighbors, your friends, or you buy from that person you saw at Lulu the other day. That's the beauty of it all. It's creating a dynamic platform. So let's just go into, into the actual uh, finer, finer details of it. 173,000 terawatts. That's 173,000 trillion watts hits the earth continuously. And it makes no sense for us not to use what has been given to us. And if that fact doesn't amaze you, perhaps this will. In 2002, one hour of sunlight on the globe could power the entire planet for a year. The sun is, is truly an amazing thing. We, we tend to think of it just as a yellow ball in the sky, but it's more than that. It turns 650 million tons of hydrogen into helium every second, 650 million tons. And it creates immense heat and immense light, and that is scattered into the universe. And remember, light is just packets of energy, it's quanta. And what happens is that when light takes the eight minutes it does to reach Earth, it might strike one of our solar panels. Solar panels are made of silicon, which happens to be the second most abundant material on the planet. And when light, remember, energy, hits the silicon, the electron is dislodged and moved upwards. And when the electron has mobility, we can facilitate an electric current. So, what do we need to create these solar systems for our houses for this grand idea? Well, we're going to need the same three things. We need a collector, that's a solar ray, and that's pretty self-explanatory. We need a battery, and that's meant to store electricity for use at a later time. And finally, we need and then we also need a DC to AC inverter, which I'll get to very soon. And another thing we'll need is like a meter. A meter where it's, it's a platform that allows us to see those customers around us and to sell our electricity to them or to even buy it from them or to even put it on autopilot so you're constantly selling, you're making profit and whatnot. So just to go into the details of the DC and AC inverter, what that is is that in electricity, we have two signals. We have DC, direct current, and AC, alternating current. And DC is what we're most familiar with. It's where the electron, if you, think, if you thought of my arm as a, a wire, is where the electron moves in one direction. While AC, alternating current, is where the electron alternates between moving forwards and backwards. But the resultant motion is always forward, so it's like this. And that's the reason why these lights that you'll see up here are actually refreshing at 60 hertz, 
for 60 cycles per second. It's just so fast that we don't notice it. And that, that happens because it has an AC pulsing through it. So, remember our solar panels make DC, and we just need something because our houses and all our appliances use AC. And that's just the reason we have the inverter. So, what are the big issues with an idea like this? Because remember, it's largely political. We are saying that we completely divorce the utility generation companies. We're saying we empower the consumer to become both a consumer and a producer. And in fact, many of us all in this crowd maybe work in oil and gas. But I'll say the thing is, you guys are actually well poised to seize an idea like this and turn it to your benefit. Because using the immense assets and capital that your companies have, you guys can be the talent that create new, bigger things. You guys can make this a reality. You can make this wireless electricity because once you start playing the game, the game of dynamic electricity, you realize that the only way you can win is to have more customers. And the only way to get more customers is to sell to other continents. So that means you can have the American continent selling to the African continent, African continent selling to Australia, to even to Antarctica and the Arctic if you really want it. That's the beauty of it all. So, the only, the real way that we're going to fix this is just through coming together and cooperating and creating this culture of kindness and a culture of sharing. It's all about interconnection, creating those physical and deeper connections. It's about making electricity more than just a commodity that we use every day, but a human right. So, just to end, we commonly like to say we run to an idea like moths attracted to a flame. But I say, no, we, we don't use a flame. The fire is what burns us. The fire is our old thinking. We need a new thinking, and that new thinking comes in the form of electricity. And that's why we must run to this idea, like moths, to a light bulb. Thank you. Thank you.